Hello and welcome to today's webinar with Hyper and Studio Retail. Uh, I'm Rafael Massey, I'm the Product Marketing Manager at Snowflake, and I'm here with Peter Demby and Ed Childs. Peter, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, thanks, Raf. Uh, I'm Peter Denby. I'm a co-founder and director of Hyper Group, um, and uh, I'll be one of the presenters today, and I'll run you through what Hyper do uh, during the course of the webinar. Ed? Hi, good morning, everyone. My name's Ed Child, so I head up the enterprise data capability at uh, Studio Retail Group. So we're a e-commerce retailer, and I'm really excited to share, share with you our um, experiences of Snowflake and working with Hyper. Cool. So yeah, in this webinar, uh, as they said, uh, uh, we'll hear from Hyper and Studio Retail. They will talk about how they built their solutions on top of uh, Snowflake's data cloud. And I'll also talk a little bit about uh, Snowflake and our platform. But before we get started, there are a couple of housekeeping items to cover uh, that will guide you uh, on, on how to interact with today's presentation and the presenters. If you would like to ask a question during the presentation, simply type your question in the Q&A um, area on your screen. The questions will be addressed towards the end of the presentation. We saved a few minutes there. And also, this webinar will be recorded, so you have access to the content after. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about before we hear from Peter and Edge is how data science and machine learning, they create this competitive advantage for companies. They're, they're actually powering innovation. So, But to be successful, those companies, they need to obtain more variety data than ever before, and at the same time, quickly uh, provide it to their data scientists. So as you, as you can see here, ingestion, processing, and cleansing data in a, in a fast way can be challenging. And integrating that data with the latest machine learning tools, frameworks, and, and libraries is, is critical for uh, success. And also, before we start, I'd like to draw a parallel um, as an introduction between BI and data science. Uh, as you can see in this slide, over the last decades, companies, they have invested heavily in reporting BI and, and visual analytics to empower more of their, of their staff with access to data that they can, um, so that they can make better decisions, business decisions. But these analysts, they, they build reports, charts, and dashboards based on historical measurements to better understand what, what happened. And then after they do that, then they add, it, they add in their knowledge and, uh, of the business to try and explain why those things happen. So they, they man, they're manually uh, analyzing the data to find patterns, and, 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 and they use their intuition, basically, to explain why those patterns actually occurred. For the most part, decisions are still made uh, based on intuition. And, and the, idea is, the, the, the idea here is that data is simply used to reinforce um, those those ideas but in the past 10 years or or so some companies they have started to shift from just doing reporting and historical analysis to actually conducting data science and and using advanced um, mathematical models and, and machine and deep learning so what actually has changed and one primary technology that is driving this change is the cloud Companies are now able to collect and, and store more and more data than ever before, and all of this data can can now be be process, can, can can now be processed by computers to automatically recognize the patterns and, and trends. And these patterns and trends they can be used to model, predict, or even forecast what can happen in the future. So, with with access to all this data and, and powerful compute, companies can actually take things a step further than, than they could before. And not just predict what will happen, but they, they can actually increase the likelihood of, of those things happening. If we think about a few examples uh, on, on how they can start being prescriptive and, and affect the future, well, Netflix can increase shows ratings by only recommending it to viewers that are going to like it. Or another example is when Uber sees a spike in demand because of an event, uh, or something, they automatically adjust surge pricing to get more drivers on the road and increasing uh, ridership and revenue. And this is why data science is proving to be the biggest competitive advantage for companies. And the cloud is the technology that has made this possible by making unlimited uh, storage and compute resources accessible to every company. So, but after that, let me, let me introduce you to Snowflake's platform. 
uh, and give you a little bit of, 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 uh, of an explanation what the data cloud is and why our solution uh, is, 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 why our product is so amazing. We've been hearing for a while now that companies are falling short of realizing the potential of data. And one of the main reasons is due to this that you're seeing here, the proliferation of data silos. So with the rise of the application cloud, this is products they have in your company like Salesforce, Workday, and, infra and infrastructure cloud, so AWS, Azure, and, and GCP. The amount of data that we have to drive our businesses has exploded, but that data is now spread across different silos and, and environments. So to create business value, innovators in every industry, they have to gather data sourced from different um, databases, business units, suppliers, partners, and customers. And all of these silos, they're super expensive and time consuming to extract value from. And, and as you can imagine, uh, here governance and, and collaboration are nearly impossible across all these multiple technologies and, and clouds. And this is why here at Snowflake, we believe that there is an incredible opportunity for a third cloud, the data cloud. Uh, if I, if I can explain it in a few words, imagine uh, having access to the world's data. And I'm talking about live access and ready to query data. Imagine a place where governance and collaboration between multiple technologies and clouds, they're possible. The data cloud is home for all the data that sits in the application clouds and in the infrastructure cloud. But it isn't just that. It's also uh, a place that enables you to access the data easily and choose the people that you want to share uh, this data securely. And the data cloud also helps you to govern to govern all of this and manage it in a way that made sense for your organization and for your business as it grows. And you can access the data cloud just by using Snowflake's platform. And Snowflake is an amazing product that spans across all of the infrastructure clouds, as you can see here on the, on the bottom of this slide. So if your organization is GCP, AWS, or Azure, you can use Snowflake with, with any one of those uh, infrastructure clouds. And you'll be very easily integrated into the systems and products that you, are, you already have. On top of that, uh, Snowflake can connect to a multitude on the data, on the data sources on your left-hand side here, and on the, other, on the other end, provide data to a large number of uh, data consumers. And the way people interact with data will span across a multitude of data workloads. So data engineering by leveraging Snowflake's ability to streamline a data ingestion and integration, or as, as a data lake by using Snowflake uh, as your data lake or alongside an existing one for data warehousing with unlimited performance and concurrency to streamline data science and to simplify and drive performance for uh, those complex workloads or even for building data applications. Uh, I mean, data requires analytics workhorse at their core. And finally, uh, it streamlines data sharing between consumers and providers. You see that Hyper uses Snowflake as their data science platform and as their data warehouse um, platform. But let's hear more from them. Over to you, Pete. Thanks, Raf. Um, so um, really pleased to be part of this webinar today with Snowflake and Studio Retail. I think, first of all, um, I'd just like to um, introduce uh, Hyper to you, to those of you who haven't come across our business before. Um, so we're all about creating customer and business value through the application of data science and the insights that we uncover. And um, we typically work with retailers and brands, um, and we help them deliver personalized experiences and these increased profits through data-driven product range pricing and marketing personalization decisions. And um, the reason that we started the business was really from our experience working in large retailers and consumer businesses um, and the experience that we found uh, being clients of the companies that we now compete with. So we were tasked with um, having to connect data from multiple sources, analyze that data and create insight, which we then hand off to different departments <clears throat> so they could improve decision making. And what we found is that the tools that were available in the market, they tended to be very slow at processing data. Uh, they were difficult to use. The insights that you were able to extract were quite difficult to consume. They tended to be expensive. And the companies that sold the products had been around a long time. Um, and they, they weren't particularly um, kind of client focused. And, and it made life a lot more difficult than it needed to be. Um, so we decided that we would uh, develop a, a company, a product, and a set of services that address those pain points. And I think the fact that we've 
kind of walked in the shoes of the type of people that use our products now has given us a real advantage and helped us develop a, a, a software platform, platform that really meets their needs. Um, we deliver value in three ways. So we do customer strategy consulting. So we help um, businesses to um, put customers at the center of their organization to make customer-led decisions. Uh, we do hands-on data science and business intelligence work. Um, so that might be on a project basis, a retained basis, or we build some bespoke um, technology products for companies. And when Ed from Studio talks, um, he'll touch on that a little bit. And we've developed a SaaS platform, which is what I'm going to focus on for the majority of this presentation. OK. So I'm going to move on to the problem that we look to solve. So we know as consumers that if we receive better experiences, more personalized and relevant experiences, we tend to shop more often, uh, we spend more money, and we recommend the retailers and brands we use to friends and family. Well, personalization is much broader, um, we believe, than the, the common consensus. Most people, when they think about personalization, they think about Amazon recommendation engines. People like you bought this product also bought this product. But actually, for us, it's much wider than that. To the Boston consulting group quote on the slide it's about an individualized value proposition so for us it's yes it is marketing personalization but it's also um, having a um, compelling product range and curating that to individuals pricing it effectively and making sure you've got great availability um, to be able to do personalization really well, you have to be really strong at using data, at using AI, and using technology. Um, and we find that although a lot of companies talk about being customer centric and data led, in reality, that it's not always the case. Um, and a big reason for that, I think, is that um, being able to do data science uh, really well, um, you need to recruit lots and lots of data scientists, which is really difficult to do. They're very expensive and they're very difficult to find. So having access to tools and technology that <clears throat> kind of deliver that capability for you and put it in the hands of you know normal business people, I think, is a um, is a real winner for retailers and brands. And then the final point, uh, the McKinsey point, decision in logic resides in individual systems or not at all. So customers get discharged experiences and there's no single platform today that acts as a, a fully serves as a, a centralized decision in engine despite people claiming the contrary so we don't claim to answer every single retail decision but the the, the areas that we focus on which are product range pricing and personalization um, which are three intertwined areas um, we developed a platform that does address those those uh, three problems so <clears throat> why did we look to focus on those areas? Um, so again, we know as consumers that range, price, and personalization are really, really, really important to our own shopping experiences. Um, we know from um, working in retail and consumer businesses that the same set of analytics can be used to address each of those uh, challenges. Um, and we also uh, kind of backed it up with a survey. The four of us who co-founded um, Hyper, we worked together for a business called KX before this. And we ran um, something called a KX Retail Innovation index and that um, uh, um, in that survey we surveyed loads of consumers about what made them shop with retailers and brands and we found the top three reasons to be ease and convenient when you dig into that that's actually the product range and uh, making it available curating it in a good way personalization was number two price and value number three so um, it's that kind of combination um, that we chose to focus on with our product so moving on to the product itself so our software uh, products is a very um, powerful platform that enables data science, BI, and decision intelligence all in one place. It allows you to very easily connect your customer, your clickstream, and your product data, apply cutting edge um, data science and machine learning, and then embed analytics in all of your key decisions around uh, product range pricing and uh, personalization. At the core of the platform is a very fast uh, cloud-based architecture that um, combines ETL, feature engineering, and machine learning all in one place. Uh, and we have a highly interactive and visual user interface. So really importantly, it puts those advanced analytics techniques in the hands of normal business users or business domain experts, so people responsible for making decisions about your range, about your price, about your marketing personalization. And it doesn't require an army of data, science, data scientists to operate it. Snowflake is an integral part of the platform. So Snowflake is the tool within our architecture that allows us to ingest, store, manage, and then query very large data sets with various analytical techniques in real time. 
Um, and we create, um, we need to process and analyze very large data sets in the platform. So the type of analytics we do, we compare, um, or we look at relationships between customers and, and products essentially, and compare customers and products, we compare product pairs, we analyze clickstream data about what people have, have browsed. So those data sets can get really large really quickly. And a lot of the traditional tools um, that would underpin a platform like this and the tools that we've used in the past, I mean, they simply ground to a halt when you run large queries on the data. So um, it was impossible really to be agile in creating insight and making decisions. Um, it required a lot of human intervention, um, which introduces a lot of inefficiency. And I think in this um, current market, that agility of insight and decision making is really key. So retailers and brands have never been under so much pressure, um, loads of competitive pressure, uh, consumer expectations are through the roof, and there's loads of macro events happening that put loads of pressure on retailers and brands. So rather than um, just do um, this kind of analytics periodically, maybe once a season to uh, make decisions about a product range, they need to be creating insight and making decisions proactively and reactively on an ongoing basis now. Um, um, and by using Snowflake as part of our platform, we're enabling uh, retail and brands to achieve that. So the platform serves multiple purposes. This is important um, because typically a retailer or a brand might have to license loads of different tools and have handoffs between teams. That creates a lot of cost and a lot of inefficiency. Um, but we enable um, our clients to do multiple things in a platform. So self-serve BI and reporting. Um, it's very fast to do BI, point and click um, interface so that you can visualize your data quickly. Um, it acts as a marketing and customer experience decision engine. So the type of analytics we do, which I'll talk about uh, in a moment, um, is very similar to the, the type of analytics someone like Netflix or a Spotify would do, and it allows you to understand customer behavior and personalize the experience. You can do customer analytics and insight to understand customer behavior and needs um, to power decision making. You can optimize for various retail scenarios. So I'm going to talk about range optimization in a minute. But you can also do pricing and promotions, uh, demand forecasting for supply chain, et cetera. You can run predictive models. So um, you can ask what if scenarios, what if I make this change, what's likely to happen? And you can also analyze the effectiveness of marketing um, and campaign performance. So you've created insight, you've executed a decision, you can then analyze the, uh, the, the performance um, of the decision. Um, the platform, um, we, we connect a lot of downstream systems, so easily uh, via API links, we connect with um, content management systems, CRM, ERP, so um, you can do the clever data science in the platform and then easily um, send off an, an output to a downstream system. Okay. So I'm going to touch on the type of analytics that really powers all of the insight and decision-making capability within the platform, and that's affinity analytics attributes and customer need states. And they create a foundational capability, say, and then enables you to optimize range pricing and marketing decisions. What typically happens is that you ingest your customer and click data, so it's customer data, web browsing, and um, a product file, perform affinity analytics. Affinity analytics looks at the relationships between people and the products they buy and browse. That helps you understand the substitutability of various items, um, items that customers have a strong affinity to and a strong loyalty to, then create product attributes. Product attributes give you a rich language to describe how customers interact with the products in store and online. And that language is in the customer's terms. So here it could be this jumper is a warm, it's warm, it's a winter basic, it's functional. Uh, and then finally, we create customer need states. So customer need state is, um, you know, kind of describes how shoppers go about making buying decisions. So it might be a birthday gift, gift for my husband, or it might be, um, you know, a casual blue jumper. Um, so by doing this analysis, we create loads of really meaningful insight, and we can then use that to power um, decisions around range, price, and personalization. Okay, I'm going to move into um, a demo uh, on the um, on the next slide, and um, okay, just bear with me one moment. I'm going to move into a demo on the next slide, um, and a couple of things to note before I go into that demo. So first of all, um, 
One of the perils of working from home is that um, I have a slightly iffy internet connection. So rather than risk a live demo, we've um, just done a um, produced a video of a demo. It's only about four and a half minutes long, but it'll give you an idea of the look and feel of the platform. Um, and secondly, I'm not a huge fan of technical deep dives on webinars. I think they tend to send people to sleep. So um, it's going to be high level. But if anyone would like to understand more about the platform, go into a lot more technical detail. We'd be very happy to uh, do that um, uh, if you want to get in touch after the webinar. Um, so the, the, the platform um, is a, it's a modular platform. Uh, it's underpinned by this nucleus of data science techniques that I described on the last slide. So affinity analytics, attributes, and customer need states. We have different modules, so for assortment or range optimization and pricing, customer marketing, demand forecasting, and uh, supply chain. And a premise of the platform is that it makes it very, very easy um, for um, non-data scientists to be able to get valuable insights from their data. Okay, so um, you typically go into the platform, um, ingest your data, and then start to um, look at the product range or the product hierarchy as it's viewed in the eyes of the customers. And the way that we do this is by the creation of customer decision trees. And the customer decision tree, as the name would suggest, allows you to um, look at the product range as it's viewed in the eyes of the customers. So um, for this uh, tree, you might take a category of products. And then as you work your way through the branches, um, you get to um, the end and you've got a, a cluster of products. And that cluster of products will represent a particular customer need state. So a set of products that a customer would consider when they're looking to make a purchase. We use natural language processing in the platform to help us identify the attributes associated with those, those clusters, those need states. Um, we can look at key metrics associated with products in a need state. So it might be sales, visits, or product margin, and also variables we've derived through affinity analytics. So what is the substitutability of each product, the affinity and the loyalty? We've created a lot of ways to visualize the data in the platform, and we created these visualizations um, really based on what we would find very useful when we were using this types of product. Um, so very easy to consume, highly visual, looking at things like the affinity of each product to other products. So if you're considering substituting a certain product, um, you can understand which ones um, are most suitable to substitute in. Allows users to very rapidly slice and dice data, to aggregate, da aggregate data, to run analytics on the fly and interact with their product and customer data. What you typically find um, is that this uh, particular element of the platform would probably be used by um, a customer insight team, uh, maybe a category management team in the case of range optimization. And they would be able to interact with the, um, the decision tree, the customer need states, make changes, um, run the algorithms again in real time, and look at the impact of those changes that they're making. So this is really all about creating insight into the relationships between uh, the customers uh, and the products that they buy and browse. After you've done the insight work, you then typically move on to um, looking to run some optimization scenarios. And the optimization uh, element of the platform would be used by the people I've mentioned, so insight, um, you know, um, uh, category management, and in the case of range optimization, probably by the buying and merchandising team as well. If it was pricing, it'd be pricing. If it was personalization, it'd be marketing. And they can start to drill into each customer need state and understand the characteristics of the products that make up that need state um, and look at them at an aggregate level and then drill down to look at them at an individual level as well. So understanding the, the products in those need states. And then start to run what if scenarios. So what if I remove these products from the product range What's the impact that that's likely to have? Um, we can calculate that and look at the impact again, um, on key metrics. So it could be the uh, impact on sales, on margin, on units, on visit. You can um, customize that to see the metrics that you're most interested in. Um, you can visualize that in different ways, depending on um, what you find easiest to consume in terms of that insight. Um, and then you can start to look to uh, trend that over time. So if I make these changes, what's likely to happen, let's say, over a three-month period? Um, and if we see that there's a sales decline over a three-month period, it tells us that we might want to do something about it. So it helps inform decisions about um, whether to introduce other products, um, You know, what kind of substitutes we need to consider, whether we need to 
market uh, certain products more heavily to um, counter that uh, that deficit that we're seeing. And then we can look at where demand might transfer to. So if we remove this particular product from the range, where does demand go to? What sales uh, volume and value are we likely to lose? And where does demand go to? So if we understand the where demand is going to go to, we can promote other products more heavily um, to make sure that we don't lose that customer's basket altogether. You can run auto optimization scenarios as well. Um, so um, auto optimize uh, against key metrics, so perhaps sales or margin. And the algorithms will run in the background in real time, and then we'll get a nice view of um, a, a new category laydown or customer need state uh, uh, laydown. What we tend to advise is that you, um, you use a combination of um, the intelligence from the platform plus your own business domain expertise. So it's that combination of uh, machine plus human that tends to yield the best results. Okay, so there's a, a very brief introduction to the platform. So hopefully you get an idea of the look and feel. Be happy to go into more detail individually for anyone that's interested. Um, just as a recap, so it's a, um, a platform, a very powerful platform that combines data science, BI, and decision intelligence in the same place. And it gives access for business domain experts, not necessarily skilled data scientists, to be able to understand the relationships between people, the customers, and the products they buy and browse, and then use the insight that they create to optimize decisions around product range, pricing, and personalization. So final slide for me, um, we've talked about, I've talked quite a bit about applications of focus mainly on range, pricing and personalization. There are some other strong use cases for the product. So for example, category merchandising, um, particularly for e-commerce sites. Um, the type of analytics that we do lends itself really well for better merchandising. So if you understand the affinity between different products, you can merchandise them together most, more effectively. Um, by having these kind of customer-centric attributes, you can describe products more effectively so customers can find them when they're searching for different products, and that's going to improve conversion rates. And by creating customer need states, we can understand what products to merchandise together that meet a particular need state, what's the optimal mix of products within that need state, and then how to promote them effectively to, um, to customers, again, to improve conversion. You can do demand forecasting with the type of analytics that we perform in the platform. So you can make sure availability is high when and where customers want to buy products. And then finally, um, by understanding customer need states, we can make sure that online and offline media is targeted to customers who are interested in certain products um, and really improve the effectiveness and the uh, increase the return on investment from uh, your media spend. Okay, so if anyone would like to uh, learn more, please get in touch with me with the details that are on screen. Um, I'd now like to uh, hand over to Ed Child of Studio Retail. Um, we've been working with Studio for getting on for a couple of years now, and Ed's going to talk about some of the work that we've been doing together uh, and also um, the part that Snowflake pay plays in, in that engagement. Uh, thanks, Pete, and good morning, everyone. So, um, yeah, just to kind of recap. So, um, uh, yeah, my name's Ed Child, so I head up the Enterprise uh, Data and Insight Capability at Studio Retail Group. What I'm going to run through this morning is uh, give you some examples of how we've been really putting our data to kind of work, and that's been utilising the Snowflake platform, but also working with great kind of partners like uh, Hyper. So, let me sort of crack in and um, give you a bit of kind of background on Studio Retail. So um, Studio Retail is an e-commerce um, um, operator. Um, we have a kind of strong kind of background in catalogs traditionally, and we started, the business started in 1955. And we've transitioned to being uh, a e-commerce uh, retail operation, and we're all about delivering value products to our consumers. So, about over over 95 percent of our orders and hours have sort of taken online we have a huge um presence in, with the kind of app and we're ultimately trying to offer digital value kind of retail um and we sell about twenty thousand products online we sell pretty much everything apart apart from kind of food um and um it's my role has been to like come in and then go how can we translate studios data into our biggest strategic asset so it's been a really exciting role for like me of going how can we bring in the right tools the right partners and the right foundations to really then make kind of um, studios studios data, data work. 
So I'm just going to share with you a top level view on our, our strategy. So there's quite a lot of kind of content on here, but if I just kind of focus on our kind of three three core um, pillars. So first of all, we want to deliver amazing value for our customers. So we are a value-based retailer. It's really important that we've got the right products um, and that we're offering really great kind of prices that translate through into um, great kind of products for our our customers. As well as delivering value, we also need to deliver choice. So having the right range and the right optimization is absolutely key. And then finally, um, payment. So we offer a range of different payment options to suit customers of every kind of like need. And you can see that ultimately, all of these things are actually underpinned by like sort of data. Because we are so data rich, we have a you know data that kind of most most businesses would like kill for. So we have all of our transactional data, all of our click streamer data, all of our marketing data. We have payment data, and there's a huge opportunity for retailers like us to fully leverage this and drive kind of value for our consumers. So first of all, just wanted to run through the kind of um, approach that we've taken with kind of hype up. And as I've kind of talked about, data is absolutely at the heart of our transformation. So we've introduced something called the lab and, and factory approach. And I'm just gonna run this, this kind of through with you. So it's absolutely key for us to provide the right kind of data environments for our analysts to succeed. So this is absolutely critical. And what we've built is a data science incubator. And this is something that we've built in partnership with Hyper, which puts about four years worth of our core transactional data into a super, super powerful um, Snowflake powered platform. And this is sort of giving us capability to be really agile and like build a sort of market, market leading kind of platform that allows us to deliver data science products at kind of scale. So this is our kind of lab, and this is a very standalone environment. We then move, once we've built data data products, we then move them over to be productionized in our factory. And this gives us a really great and agile environment for prototyping, for discovery, and like building some great kind of like products that we can then build in our own ecosystem. And Snowflake plays an absolutely critical role here because it's really showing what we can do with a really, really powerful agile platform. So I just wanted to give a little couple of kind of minutes to some of our, our data roadmap. And this is all about us moving from being diagnostic to all the way through to, to becoming more predictive and prescriptive. And every kind of retailer is on, on th this kind of like journey. So if I start down here in the bottom left. So we started our uh, relationship with um, Hyper in uh, January uh, 2020 and this saw the kind of creation of our uh, data science incubator. And this was really, really key to build the right kind of model in the right environment that allowed us to kind of do, do all of this discovery work and prototyping at scale. Um, Studio doesn't have the right kind of data, data science platforms internally. So it's been absolutely key for me to be able to demonstrate uh, what um, advanced um, analytics and like data science can deliver to the kind of studio. So our relationship with Hyper has been really, really key, working with them to deliver essentially data science as a kind of service. Um, and this kind of, this uh, platform has been absolutely key to that. So we started um, last year in January 2020. So this was getting the data, data model built and um, drawing together multiple data sources to like give us that really important 360 degree view of a customer. We then started delivering our first set of products in uh, H2 last year. And this was largely around the historical performance of our uh, catalog effectiveness and leveraging a huge amount of internal, internal data that we previously lacked the analytical firepower to um, really kind of like grasp. And we're now utilizing Snowflake to, to 
data share. So we've got um, all of our um, transactional data in the um, Snowflake platform, and then it's looking at how we can translate these these awesome data products that we've built from the kind of lab over to the kind of factory. And where we want to like move to into 2022 is going. How can we, you know, take this to the um, next level? So we've got a really um, packed roadmap over the next kind of like 12 months and working um, clearly with kind of Hyper to utilize their kind of platform and like sort of skills, but it's um, all kind of like built on the Snowflake uh, platform. So I just wanted to share a little bit of kind of detail with one of the, the first kind of like products that we've actually productionized. Um, so this is a kind of um, a view of us kind of moving clearly into category management. So we have a significant um, sort of, um, grading team. Um, obviously, buying and selling kind of products is absolutely core and it underpins our business. And what we've done is actually help stitch together data that was quite kind of like disparate and really embed category category management. And this is absolutely key with our kind of trading team because this helps them to understand way more about what the impact of our products and and categories has on the whole organization so you can see here we've delivered um some um really cool looking dashboards through a power power bi front end but all of this is kind of built and like powered on kind of snowflake so category management has been absolutely key so this helps our traders move away from historically just just focusing on driving um, driving sort of margin and sell through, but actually understanding the roles that like different products and and categories have for the whole kind of business. So we can understand the impact that uh, different products have on um, on loyalty, on acquisition, on retention, on credit income, on credit engagement, on lifetime. I'm going to value and link all of this to our kind of marketing activity. So this has been an absolute game changer and is really, really helping us by then going, let's really understand the like power by joining all of this really rich data together, what we can really sort of do and drive as uh, drive um, QDA's category management forward. Um, once we've got all of this amazing um, category insights, we then want to see how we can um, enhance customer experiences better in, in this kind of like sort of space and then be ultimately using this to drive more and more personalization. So if I look forward to 2021, um, we've got some really big and exciting um, plans here and we do have a kind of packed um, roadmap working with, with kind of hyper and looking at how now we have the right kind of platform and the right kind of partner, how we can continue bringing the right data and analytics capability for us to really utilize our data. And this is all about us putting data at the heart of our organization. So let me just talk you through a um, few examples here. So first of all, around um, uplift modeling. So we're historically a um, catalog based organization and there's still segments of our customers who love getting a a a printed catalogue through the kind of post. The um, challenge is it's also one of our most expensive marketing channels. But we've got to be absolutely spot on through targeting and like getting the right customers with the right kind of content at the right time. And particularly for expensive marketing channels like this. Um, so uplift modeling is really, really key to helping us understand the incremental that we're like seeing from these really important customer segments. Um, secondly, um, Pete's already talked about it. So um, affinity led led kind of products. So we all um, I like to be clear on affinities and recommendations used by kind of tools like Netflix and Spotify. But actually, we need to be using this in our kind of retail and customer experiences too. So this is how we can utilize our kind of huge assets in our click stream stream kind of data, tie it, tie it together with our um, uh, transactional data, and then essentially use this to be really, really targeted by, by helping customers see products that are really well suited to them. So we can make sure that we've got the right range and the right assortment um, for our different customers. 
And then finally, intelligent markdown. So um, obviously supply chains and being efficient is absolutely critical for any kind of retail organization. And particularly now where kind of costs are uh, really, cost management is really important. So intelligent markdown is absolutely key. So for us, this is about us going, how can we utilize our information about our, our kind of re real time stock inventory and intelligent forecasting to make sure that we've got the right kind of pricing, the right range and the right assortment at, at different kind of like stages. So how can we move from being reactive to being more kind of predictive and have um, sales and uh, margin sort of managed so we can maximize yields and also just make sure that we're managing stock levels appropriately. But all three of these are great examples where we need to utilize the right tools and the right kind of partners to really put all of our kind of great work. So um, a couple of kind of slides left. So I just wanted to talk through the value model. So you can see here that um, my role has been to kind of come in and like build the right platforms and technology and bring in the kind of right kind of partners. So we've lacked some of that strategic view uh, previously, but I'm really excited by stuff that we've been doing here with both Hyper and uh, Snowflake. So you can see simply from this, this kind of like diagram that Snowflake is almost the kind of glue. So Snowflake is the kind of glue that, that stitches together studio with kind of Hyper and great kind of like partners who have the data science expertise and the platforms and um, um, capabilities, but then how we can link that to the right kind of products and the right data science tools. Once we have all, all three of these things connected, we can do some really great, awesome like stuff. So I think Snowflake has really helped accelerate us over in, in kind of kind of this space and it allows partners like Hyper to use the right data science tooling, whether it's uh, uh, Python, TensorFlow, et cetera, to be able to deliver data like products for us at kind of speed. So it's been a really important, important um, partnership for us, but it's a really simple model for how we can deliver value. And then finally, so I think, you know, the kind of vision for us and the vision for kind of studio is we have a kind of three year year uh, plan to be to become a billion pound organization, which is a, you know, audacious goal, but particularly with the acceleration that we've seen with kind of like COVID, we feel is actually fully achievable. But for us to be able to like get there, we have to put the customer at the heart. And for us to put the customer at the heart of the organization, we have to be able to put data. And data has to be one of Studio's biggest strategic assets. So I'm really excited by us looking at how we can put data at the heart of the organization, which allows us in so many of these uh, different areas here, how we can utilize data for better ranging, for better assortment, for better marketing, for better personalization. And all of this will join up to like deliver better experiences for our customers. So it's been a really great kind of a great partnership with Hyper, um, some great kind of partnership using the Snowflake platform. And I'm really excited about what we will continue to keep delivering together. So I think that's kind of me done, and I'm going to hand back over to Raf. Thank you for the great presentation, Ed uh, and Peter. Yeah, we still have a few minutes for Q and A. Uh, we have questions here, so let me just open the Q and A box. So if you have any questions, just uh, type them there, and we'll, we'll see them here and, and, and answer them now. Um, yeah. So the first question that we have is, what are the difficulties in data integration into the hyper platform in order to facilitate the easy to use analytics and optimization. Do you want to take this one? I think I'm going to take that one off. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, essentially it's really easy to connect any data into our platform. Um, the, the, the types of data that we bring in are, are things like browsing and web, web click data. Um, we have standard APIs, um, you know, to import things like Google Analytics data into the platform. And the other data source that we use is, is really transactional data. And, and most, most businesses you know, ha have a decent structure of transactional data um, and decent product hierarchy data. So it's, it's really easy to connect to any technology and, and bring that in through the, the ETL fees that we've created and the standard APIs. 
I guess the major challenges lie in making sure you know that the data is fundamentally um, prepared to get into our platform. Um, we know that a lot of businesses have, have siloed data. Um, you know, they're not necessarily connected in the right way. They don't necessarily have the right attributes attached to products and things like that. So I guess that's where we really come in and, and help before utilizing our platform is to help um, companies to, you know, to engineer their data, to get the most out of it before they get it into our platform. But once it's in there, it's a pretty seamless, seamless process. Perfect. Uh, we have a couple more questions here. Um, did you look at any other solutions outside of Snowflake? If so, uh, why did you decide to choose Snowflake as your data platform? I can say that one again. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we've 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 had plenty of options open to us. Um, you know, when we were starting to build our technology, and, and Pete mentioned before, we we, we worked at a company called KX who who have their own technology. Um, you know, specialising in I guess real time streaming data. But the reason we went with Snowflake really is is, is the flexibility um, of the model um, in terms of you know being able to dial up and dial down the processing and compute power that you need, you know, being able to um, flexibly apply that kind of model to um, different aspects of the product, so dial things up if it's a real heavy lifting part of the product for implementing a machine learning algorithm, or, or dial that down for some more straightforward querying of data to, you know, to render into a visualization in the platform. We really love that flexibility that, that, that Snowflake gives us. And I think another real good part of Snowflake that, that we're starting to, to find the benefits of is, is the whole data sharing model. And I guess one of the questions that we had earlier around that, you know, that, that is it easy to connect data in? It's very easy if, if, if our clients also work with Snowflake because of the whole data sharing thing, and it's, it just makes things so much easier. So, yeah, that, that was kind of a big reason we chose Snowflake. Cool. And I think that um, starts to answer. Uh, probably just... Yeah, go ahead. And kind of, Raph, I would just probably add to that too. So I have um, a range of kind of different specialist partners in the sort of data like space. So I have a, a partner who's more advisory on data like strategy. Uh, I have a kind of partner through uh, method, through for through more for data science and advanced analytics. And then I have a kind of partner through marketing effectiveness, you know, looking at tools for um, media mix, mono, uh, uh, marketing effectiveness and multi-touch attribution. And a common common thread across all of these is that all of my data partners are all advocates of, of, of kind of like Snowflake. And I'll be honest, it's my role to be driving more, more strategic business value but it's you know been really really strong to look at the growth of like snowflake but also my kind of trusted network of partners who are all all kind of using the same technology so it's been a kind of no-brainer from my point of view because of, there's just so much use and trust within the overall market yeah and um there's one more question here that I think Damon started to answer uh, already, but how are you? Uh, how are you guys able to securely share data between Studio and Hyper through Snowflake? Okay, so yeah, I mean, because both of, both of our companies are using um, Snowflake, it, it's really easy to do that through the data sharing model, and that's starting. That's something that we're starting to take advantage of now, which is obviously very secure. Um, but yeah, we, we, I guess the whole cloud-based model of, of you know. Of, you know, and, and where things are going makes that much easier to do. Um, you know, Studio have their own uh, data warehouses and, and, and some of which may be on premise, some of which may be in the cloud. But I guess um, Snowflake really makes that easy to, to create that security and that peace of mind when you're, bringing, when you're bringing data over into our environment or into our product. Amazing. Um, yeah, and um, I, would, I would say as well, from a kind of data sharing point of view, that's absolutely key because it would be, you know, a traditional model for us working with partners around data science and marketing effectiveness is to extract data, send it to a third party. They go off and build something in their own ecosystem, and you never get get that kind of like like back. And Snowflake will be a game changer for us by then going. Actually, we can sort of build and maintain data in a kind of Snowflake 
environment, but then give trusted, secure access to the right kind of partners who can then go off and do their kind of critical roles, but then use the kind of the Snowflake platform to really come back and embed that in the sort of um, internal studio environment. So for us, it's going to be super powerful. It's going to be really um, exciting one for us over the next 12 months. Yes, uh, no, amazing to hear. And you guys are using uh, our platform as your data science platform, data warehouse, and now data sharing. Uh, very, very cool um, to see uh, you guys taking full advantage of, of the Snowflake platform. I think that was the last question that we had here. Um, if you, if you, this this webinar will be available on demand, so you can uh, watch it later. You have access to the content and uh, the contact details from everyone there. So if you have any questions further, uh, just feel free to to email Ed, Peter, and, and Damon. And also one more thing: uh, registration is now open for Snowflake's annual user conference. Uh, so the Snowflake Summit is happening on the 9th and 10th of June. Um, be there for the announcements of Snowflake's latest product innovations. You have access to technical deep dives, virtual hands-on labs, demos, and much more. And you can find the link to register here as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else from you guys? No, that's, that's it, I think. But thanks, everyone, for joining. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Likewise. Thanks, guys.